Hey you guys, we are excited to share with you some very exciting news. We have created an online training platform that you can do in the palm of your hand. We over 20 modules and nearly 80 lessons. This is the most comprehensive and detailed scalp micro-pigmentation course out there. For those of you who can't travel here, maybe you're in other countries, you can now learn from your computer, you can sit at home, you can sit in a bus, and you can learn scalp micro-pigmentation with the greatest innovators in this industry. Want to learn more? Click the link below. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Scalp Solutions Podcast. I am your host, David Santiago. And today I have with me my man out in the West Coast, Roger Ponce. What's good, brother? What it is, brother. I'm happy to be here. feel honored to be on the show. I thank you for, for having me and giving me your time. Yeah, thank you for taking out some time from your busy schedule, you know, to jump on the podcast. Um, As you know, and thank you in advance. You know, we're putting a, I'm putting a segment together. It's called Up and Coming. And what I wanted to do was highlight some new S&P artists. And what I mean by new is anyone who's just starting out within the two year range, because I felt like it was important to get your guys uh, perspective on the industry and, you know, what's actually going on, because I feel like it can, you know, the marketing can be a little, uh, on the other side and is misleading. And I just wanted to bring some artists that, you know, agreed to be transparent with their, uh, you know, their, their come up on the game. So, you know, I appreciate you, you know, for, you know, volunteering <laughs> to, 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 yeah. to, give to be in the, to, to be in the hot seat. Be yeah, in the no, hot 100, seat. hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, yeah, I want to, I want to just kind of give people my experience. Um, and it's not, you know, people take classes and they think, I'm going to make a hundred thousand right off top. And that's just not the case. You know, uh, there's a lot of struggles, trials and tribulations to go through before you uh, get to that, to get, get to that point. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to definitely, you know, we're going to, you know, we're going to touch up on that, but before we do, let's start off with the clinic that you're representing, which obviously you, you, you bling it all behind and right there, you know, where, where, where are you from my brother? Um, so I, um, I'm, I'm from San Francisco, California, from the Mission District, uh, in, uh, out here in the West Coast. Uh, have some New York roots in me, family in the Bronx, started out there. We made our way to the West Coast, so I'm a West Coast Boricua. Yeah. Um, I'm a West Coast Boricua, uh, there he is. Uh, but yeah, no, just uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I grew up mostly in San Francisco, spent some time in Houston, Texas. Loved it out there in the South. Uh, moved, moved back home. Uh, my daughter was getting a little older. wanted to uh, grow up around family and uh, people who were close to me. I thought that was an important connection to have. Um, but I do miss my Houston folks too. Shout out to H Town. Sorry about that. I had a little glitch there. I'm I muted myself. My bad. But no worries. How, no worries. How long have you been doing S and P, my brother? Uh, I've been doing it about mm, a little. Uh, I would say about two years, two years. Got you. And how has it been going for you? You know, it started off very slow, right? Cause, uh, uh, you, you walk out of the class and you've got your head held high. You feel like I'm about to get to do this. And I did not come from a barber background. I didn't come from a, on my own business background. So I had no idea what I was doing. Um, so I, I reached out to some friends. I reached out to my daughter's godfather. And I was just, and I told him what I was doing. He's all, all, I'm all in. He was thinning a little bit in the hairline and the crown. And he's like, I'm all in. So he trusted me. So I, I my very first uh, S&P procedure was in my house. Um, and I was super excited, did my layout. I watched my video from the class. I laid out everything perfect, had my ring light and everything. And about an hour into it, I realized my lighting just sucked. Right. And I started panicking because I couldn't see what I was really doing. And I didn't want to just spray and pray on my man's head. This is my family. I got, <laughs> I got to see them all the time. Right. So like, like this is going to be getting real awkward. So I had to tell my like, look, my man, we're going to have to stop. My line is not right. And I don't trust what I'm doing. So I need to get this room correct before we actually finish and, and do this the right way, because I don't want to steer you in the wrong direction. Um, but yeah, it, it was interesting trying to like convince uh, friends and coworkers at the time, like, hey, let me do this. And, you know, there's still an anomaly when it comes to the scalp or the head tattoo, right? They, they 
have seen either a bad job or what they imagine in their head is just big blue dots on their head that's going to look nothing, nothing like an actual hair follicle. Um, so I actually trained with uh, John and Brittany Chan Chandler, amazing oh. people, very, very, very talented artists. Christian Chan was there too. He was one of the instructors, all oh. very super talented and professional. He actually did my own SMP. Um, and John Chandler you know, did yours? John, John Chandler did mine. Oh. And, uh, and when we're sitting in the chair, you know, you become, uh, you, you start talking with your artists and we're, we're talking stories back and forth. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I like to joke around and uh, so we're, we were just telling a lot of stories and he's like, you know, a lot of this business is making people feel comfortable in their own skin. He's like, if you took the time to actually dedicate yourself to this, I think you would do really well because someone like you could make people feel comfortable like, hey, it's okay because you're kind of outgoing, you're loud, you know what I mean? And if you would get it, other people would be more willing to get it. And I thought of it and I sat on that information. I sat on it. I was like, oh, that would be cool, blah, blah, blah. Because I'm kind of an uh, uh, artist. You know, I, I draw, I paint, I do different things. But, but I never actually thought about moving into the cosmetic, you know, the, cos the basically permanent makeup or cosmetic tattooing. It was the furthest thing from my mind. Um, and I sat on that information for about six months. And then I called John one day. I was just like, you know what? I'm going to do this. You know, I want, I want to take this class um, and I want to just think outside the box and do something different. And uh, I went to the class first day and esthetician, barber, esthetician, barber, someone who does eyebrows. And, and then there's me, right? Uh, for, <laughs> former soldier, <laughs> right? Like, I'm like, like, like this, just in the hustle and the grind, working the city, you know, like, and, and one of the assignments he gave, right, the, the very first day, I remember he gave us a melon. And he's like, your homework assignment is I want you to draw the crispiest lineup on your melon. Whoever wins the crispiest lineup gets the free machine. You got a machine with the class that was included, but you're going to get an extra machine. So I was nervous. I'm like, man, the, these barbers got me, right? They got me. But I, I took it serious, right? I went home, I got my ruler out, I measured, I, I stepped back and went like a few feet back and I'm staring at it from different angles. And I was like, you know what? Let me even put some sauce on it. And I put a little Drake part in it too. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, cause I really didn't think I was gonna win. I was like, I'm just gonna try my very best. And I'm just gonna, you know, just be me, be original, be funny. Right, and right. I came in and the, next, and the next day, you know, Christian, uh, Brittany, and John were just looking at, at, at every single lineup, super meticulous. And, you know, they went, they went to their little powwow, their huddle, uh, right? And then they came back and they're, and they're just like, yeah, you know what? The Christmas lineup was, was Ponce. And I was like, damn, I, no one was more shocked in the room than me. <laughs> they they love mine, but I was still doubting it, right? Because this was not my, my thing, not my forte, right? And that's when I started really uh, thinking like, you know what? You can do this. You put, you, you put your mind to it and you can do this. And that's just one step, right? John, the hairline is a baby step. But once you start getting in that mindset of I can do this, then I can do the next thing. Then I can do the next thing. Um, that was super important. It, it, it was a turning point for me in the class. Got you. So now you, you experience that, you get your training, you've been in the industry going on two years or you're at your two year mark. Has it been everything that, you thought it was going to be when you first started out? No, um, it, it hasn't, right? Because it's very difficult to start something organically from the bottom, right? And, uh, and I had no tools. Your book hadn't come out yet. This is uh, the blueprint <laughs> on how to start your s and business from, from A to Z, right? That would have been really helpful two years ago. Um, but I had no idea what I was doing. And like, you start watching YouTube on how to do this, how to start to get an LLC and all of this stuff seemed very, very complicated to me. Um, a very low tech. Um, I didn't even really do social media um, before this. It wasn't necessarily even comfortable in the camera. I like to keep my life pretty private and I had to step out of that comfort zone. And um, like I could talk in front of people all day and joke around and be, you know, life of the party type, but put me in the camera and I'm just like, uh, uh, you know, um, so yeah, but it's been, uh, it's been an adventure, uh, to say the least. Right. And I think one of the things that, um, I realized early on is I need help. 
right? Is I need help and I'm not gonna be able to do this on my own without um, the advice or mentorship of other people. Um, John Chandler was about an hour and a half away from me commuting and that's that's if there's no traffic, right? So, you know, Cali traffic is, is Cali crazy. Traffic so, is, I was stationed there. Trust nasty. Me. You, Even you with five lanes, five lanes, six lanes traffic, oh man. Yeah, so I was like, I can't uh, go out there. And he did offer you, like, you want to come shadow me anytime you want, let me know. And he's super busy and I was super busy uh, and it was super far away. So I started venturing out, searching. I was like, well, there's got to be an artist near me, right? I started, and so I started researching, uh, looking, and then I found uh, Janelle with SMP Inc. So I just reached out to her, actually just in, in, off of Instagram and the DMs, right? And I told her, I was like, hey, um, I'm really looking to learn uh, SMP. I've been certified, but truth be told, like I'm a novice, I need practice and I would love to come work there. I don't wanna get paid. I just wanna learn how to do it if you're okay with that. And she was like, I'm really glad you reached out. It took, actually it took her a couple of weeks. I just kind of forgot about it, right? And, uh, and I figured she probably just gets thousands of uh, messages all the time. And she did reach out later on and she was like, yeah, I actually, um, I'm doing an apprenticeship where you could come in and, you know, like I teach you my own techniques and you already have a foundation and we're just going to, um, we're basically just going to build on top of that. And uh, so I was, I was all in, I was like, cool, this is, this is what I was looking for. How does someone runs their day-to-day SMP business and, and how they deal with clients. Cause I'm, I'm, I was kind of a confrontational person, right? And I, I still am, I guess. Like if I have beef <laughs> with somebody, I'm gonna tell you to your face, like, this is my problem. And you know, when you have clients and regular clientele, you, you, you don't fold, but you gotta cater to your clients a little yeah. bit and their wants and needs and so forth. And that was a learning curve. Um, and Janelle has been super patient and, and just a wealth of knowledge. And I actually didn't really know much about SMP Inc. Um, and they really brought me in like family. Marvin, Tyler, Janelle of SMP Inc. have just like uh, really helped me along the way, grow, learn. Um, they they make me be accountable. Um, and I remember I, I did a SMP procedure on this one guy as a free job, right? Because I was still trying, I was trying to get my feet feet wet, and. His SMP was not to his liking, and it really wasn't to my liking either. But that's not how I expected it to heal and come out. <laughs> this, and this, was, this was your, but this was your work, right? This was my work. Got it. This was my work, and you weren't and satisfied with that either. I wasn't satisfied with it either, and I couldn't sleep that whole night. And I was punching the air like Cuba Gooding Jr. and Boys in the Hood, <laughs> talking to myself like, like I was like, man, what's wrong with me? I'm like tattooing scalps, like, what are you doing? Like, this is stupid. And I, I, I doubted myself so much. I was ready to quit in that moment. And shout out to Janelle and Marvin, because I reached out to them. I was like, I think maybe this ain't for me, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And I was having a whole pity party, right? And both of them, calm, collected, were like, anything we do here can be fixed. He's like, don't worry about it. You're growing, you're learning. And we can make sure that this gets fixed and you're going to learn from it. And just like when I used to be a fighter, right. And I always use the terminology with, with friends and stuff. You don't, it's not win or lose. It's win or learn. Right. So I took that L, but I learned from it. Right. And my biggest mistake during that procedure was that I didn't know my equipment well enough. Right. I wasn't a master of my craft. And I've always preached that to people, like learn your equipment, know your equipment. You know that from the military, right? Like, like you, you got to know your, your rifle top to bottom, right? You got to like, like in boxing, like you got to make sure your equipment's right. Everything's ta- taped up, right? Everything. Right. And I didn't do that because I was so eager to just plunge into this dude's scalp. He was just right? ready to rock and roll. I was ready to rock and roll, and it's not as easy as when you're just hitting melons or like when you get a, a, a scalp that's really good, so then you're on a high, and then when you get somebody that's difficult, it threw me for a loop. Um, and that was really the moment that I decided, like, if you're going to do this, this is going to happen, right? And you can, either, you can either keep going or you can just quit right now. But, you know, it, it was really a turning point for me in the sense that that I was really close to quitting. And then I said, no, you know, you got to see this thing through because 
this is what your, your daughter's looking at. Like when something gets hard, you're just going to fold, right? Like you got to see it through. And if I fail, at least I went out swinging. You know what I mean? Awesome. Um, I love that mindset. So, so, you know, and I knew SMP was, was gold, right? In the sense, not monetarily, right? But I knew that it was going to grow into this monster industry. Because when you think of SMP, how it is now, still so many people don't know about it, right? They don't know what it is. They think it's weird. And I think about how 15 years ago, 10 years ago, people were, were talking about Botox or tattooing eyebrows and lips. And people were looking, I'm like, I would never do that. That's crazy. Why would you do that? Fast forward to modern day, right? It's hard to find somebody who doesn't have something done, whether it's Botox, eyebrows, lips, you know, whole bodies complete, right? And even to put like a little Puerto Rican spin on it, right? Uh, I always say like, it's like reggaeton in the early 90s, right? People were like Latin rap. I don't know about this. It all sounds the same. Fast forward to now, Bad Bunny is the number one stream artist in the world, right? You got trust fund babies in Beverly Hills and the Hamptons talking about Yo Pereo Sola, right? That's crazy. Yeah. That's I, crazy. You, know, you when you when we spoke the other day and, and you said that to me, I was like, man, that's a good, that's a good gem. And I will tell you right now, I know you didn't have it trademarked, so I was gonna use it. <laughs> you, <left. laughs> you pulled it you took it you took it back bro all right no listen i i love i love that analogy because because it you know it is in fact um it is in fact true but i want to just backtrack a little right um okay because you, you you were talking about you know the, your the mindset you had to attain to like push you forward and keep going and tell you like don't worry you know you got this i'm learning it's not failure was this your first attempt in being an entrepreneur is uh, yes smp yes yes first attempt now let me ask you uh roger how, how old do you how old were you when you started when you embarked on this journey you know, still, still in my 40s, still getting older. <laughs> He's like, I'm not telling you my age. I was in my 40s. All right. So I'm, I'm and I'm only asking, you know, just to leave with the next question. So new to SMP, we understand. And is it you can agree or disagree, right? SMP is so much more than just understanding how to make impressions, understanding how to identify a good canvas and all that good stuff, right? There's a whole other portion that you need to have a foundation of that's going to assist with that transition into a good S&P artist. And you, you kind of expressed you were, you were experiencing some difficulties with that in the beginning because you didn't know, what a, you know how to put the LLC and all that together, essentially how to establish you know, uh, a business. So how did how, you, what was your research like? What were your tools? What, what were your go-to to, to, to get that going? Well, I started doing just Google searches, right? And it really wasn't helpful because it just felt like there was this sea of things to get into, right? And then you get approached once you in, are in the algorithm of SMP and permanent makeup, you get approached by different marketing teams. But I wasn't prepared to spend like a crazy amount of money to market myself when I was still growing. So, um, and, and this is uh, what I found is I found this group called the PMU Launch. Right. And this is what worked for me because I was super low tech. Right. And what I really thought set them apart is they teach you from A to Z how to market yourself, how to uh, set up a business. I didn't even know what a, a Facebook business page was. Right. They, they showed me how to set it up and they start launching ads for you right away. Um, and they were they were great. They, they honestly and I would recommend them to anyone who's starting out who was like me, who is low tech and um, just really need some guidance, right? Um, I didn't even know how to, you know, like present myself on social media, how to even make an ad, what the algorithm were, were you know what I mean? I didn't know in Facebook, you couldn't put before and after pictures, you know, like all, all these things were brand new to me and they knew it. And what I would say this, they're not gonna do things for you. It's a class, it's a six week crash course I can't even talk as a crash course in how to do, um, how to run your business from setting up your Facebook to having the right mindset and 
one of the most important chapters for me, there was a chapter in there called the pendulum of doubt, right? And because the pendulum will swing both ways. And when something negative happens, you start to doubt yourself. And that one resonated with me so much because that was what happened to me, right? That's when I was doubting myself. And I was like, I was like, man, this chapter is so important. You got to push yourself to swing back in the other direction, right? And that's a very difficult to do thing to do sometimes. So I started reaching out um, to mentors and SMP artists I, I respected, right? I started asking them questions, I'm not trying to get free classes, but just you know, or free game, right? But just like, some, I really like your work. I'm trying to learn. Um, would you mind if I ask you some questions? And, and most of the SMP artists out there uh, were more than willing to help and share and help me grow. And I appreciate that so much. Um, I think it's such an important community uh, for people to just really guide each other because it really is, it's blowing up and it's growing. On top of that, I really had to get into the mindset of men's health and beauty industry, right? Because it's different, it's changing. Before, men weren't really doing stuff. It was almost seemed, seemed as soft to take care of yourself, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And then I just got, came to this really mindset that self-love is not an act of vanity. You know, it's a necessary action to maintain your sanity. And you, you could use that too, if you want. <laughs> but, uh, but I thought, I wrote that down. I wrote that, I wrote that down and I kept telling it to myself, right? It's okay to feel comfortable in your skin. It's okay to look at your reflection in the mirror and be like, I like what I'm seeing, you know? And it's okay to not like what you're seeing and want to make an improvement. That doesn't make you uh, vain. That just makes you want to feel good about yourself. And that's important in these days that we're really tackling and understanding mental health. Yeah, absolutely, man. There's so many little nuances that you need to pick up along the way that helps build you into an all-around well-versed um, SMP artist. And I know these are things that, are not taught during uh, fundamentals. And, and it's not a bad thing. It's just the reality of it is there's no time to give you the whole breakdown of what you're about to experience the whole next year or two in the three or four days. Essentially, you're there to learn, you know, the techniques. Um, so you've expressed a couple of hurdles that you had to overcome. But can you identify one main one that you overcame that you feel like really opened up your mind and helped you with saying, you know what, I got this, like, I'm, I'm going to be able to do this. Yes, because I was still in the mindset as SMP was not my main gig. It was my side thing that it was way. And when I was viewing it, I was almost not necessarily viewing it as a hobby. I knew it was important, but I wasn't giving it my full attention right and it deserved my full attention because me as a brand and my my business deserve my full attention my team deserved my full attention and once i really got into that mindset you know and the ads started rolling in and i started learning the verbiage of uh, of when people would come in to see you and talking to them because this thing sells itself when somebody actually walks in for a consult i started realizing they've already decided that they want to get this done they're just trying to decide if they're comfortable with you as an artist doing it for. Um, and once I got into that mindset and I just started closing client after client after client, and obviously it was, I have it done. So that that's a walk and talk and billboard. Right. And, you know, they started feeling comfortable with me and I started slowing down, not trying and match the speed of other artists that I was watching on, on YouTube or on Instagram, going at my own pace, using the needles that work for me, asking questions on how to troubleshoot when the needle didn't work or when uh, it wasn't being reacting on the skin, like if I wasn't getting feedback, uh, you know, I'll go from the 5 p.m. needles to FYT to Bishop. And, and there's, there was always like something to learn about each system. And I kept trying to learn and learn as much as I could about the equipment 
so I can troubleshoot. Same thing with inks, right? There, there's different inks out there that for the most part are generally the same, but you still have to know how to use the one that you are particularly using and what the ratios are and how that's gonna look on your client's skin tone. And once I started really diving into the fundamentals of SMP, that's when my work started flourishing. Got you. Got you. Now, I want to bring something up that you did. Um, and it's something that I do. And it's something, you know, I, I feel like is important to talk about because you brought up how you were reaching out to other artists, you know, whether it was established artists, maybe other new artists. And you were essentially were trying to tap in, trying to network with them to get some information um, from them. And I, I know you probably didn't expect uh, me to bring up the, the scenario, but you did something. And it was with with me. And I remember when I received it, I said to myself, I was like, wow, this guy's fucking good. And I appreciated it because it's it's a technique. It's a tool that I use that I learned, you know, before you ask something of someone, you know, you you got to give them a little a little value, too. So, like, I come one day into the office, I got a little package. And at the time, you know. You had hit me up and you were asking me, you know, ones and twos and nothing too crazy. It was, I think it was more so like, you know, business advice. Hey, what's this? What mm. should I do with this? And, you know, I was, of course, I, I enjoy, I enjoy helping other artists as much as I possibly could. But I see the box and it's from you. I open it up and you sent me like about six or 10 cigars. And when I saw that, I was like, my man. All right. Cause I already knew right there. I was like, okay. He got, he got me for like about another 20 questions. He, he, <laughs> <laughs> he paid this way. No, but I, I, I want, I want you to tap in on that, man. Cause I know that there was, you know, that, that wasn't something that you just woke up and said, yo, I want to do this. I, I know, especially knowing you now, I know that that was a strategy. Can you talk on that and how important it is? Cause I know there's a lot of new artists that may be, um, not overwhelmed, but they, 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 may, they might be a little, uh, they might be scared to, to contact, you know, other artists or successful artists and, or they just don't know how to form that relationship, man. Can you talk about how you go about establishing that and how instrumental that has been, you know, for you and your growth? Um, I think number one is to pay attention to other things besides the work. Right. And and I saw you, I would follow your page and I remember me meeting you at the Scalp Expo and you, you know, and I have a big love of cigars also. And I remember you smoking a stogie at the Expo and uh, just that we had similar backgrounds in our come up. Right. Because uh, and I remember talking to you uh, about it and just talking about the different type of work we do, both uh, military veterans. And automatically, I just felt like a very uh, positive uh, vibe and energy. And just from in the expo in general, but but I got this genuine energy from you and lots of other people at the expo as well. But I knew that you were a former a Marine and I knew that you love cigars. And I remember the company I got was Cigars of Valor because it's made by a, uh, a vet, right? And they use all Nicaraguan leaves. And they, so I actually got, got a box for myself to try them out because I wasn't trying to send you trash, right? <laughs> so I was like, I like, I ain't gonna send, I ain't gonna send my man no black and mild, right? <laughs> and then ask him questions like, nah, bro, you, you're done. <laughs> yeah, so, so I try them out like, okay, no, this is quality. I gotta send my man a box because time is valuable, right? Just like when you set a consultation or if you set somebody to come and they no call, no show on you, right? You feel, you feel stuck, right? You're stood up and you're just like, this time could have been used so much more productively. And I appreciated you taking the time out to, um, with everything you've got going on from the trucking to the podcast, that your own SMP, uh, to you still working like a, a regular job, right? To just take a few minutes out of your day and be like, this is what worked and what didn't work for me. Do, it, do with that information what you will, right? And, and I would take it to heart and, you know, and I still would make mistakes and I, you still, you know, I'm hard headed and I would do try and do things my own way. And then you realize there's proven success ways and, and you still are going to find different ways to do things. I've taken trainings with some of incredible artists, right? I, like that are John, John Brittany, John and Brittany Chandler from Scalpco, amazing people. Then Janelle, Marvin and Tyler here at SMP Inc. And then I even went down South and, and spent, uh, a couple of days with uh, Jeff Picasso 
And I'm actually really glad that I, I put a big gap in between um, SMP Inc. to go train with Jeff Picasso because now I understood SMP Inc. or SMP better, right? I understood different skin tones, the bounce back, all that stuff. And I don't, I don't think it would have been beneficial to just be like train, 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 train without having these scalps in between, right? Um, and I remember going down the train with uh, Jeff. Jeff is very informal, right? It's not like I'm in a classroom and he's just telling me this is what we do. I remember he, we're supposed to meet at 10 a.m., right? And he calls me at nine, where, where, where are you at? And I was just like, I was about to go get coffee and head, my head down to your studio. He's like, no, 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 just meet me right now. We'll go get coffee. And I was like, all right. So I Ubered down there, met him up. We get in the car, we're off to Home Depot, right? And he's buying stuff, but the whole time, Jeff was asking me questions. All right, so who are you? What, what, what do you want to do in this industry? Where do you see this industry in two years? And this dude was conducting a full-on interrogation. Interrogation, of, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for real, about what, what my direction was in SMP. And it was things that I hadn't even questioned myself on yet, right? So they were important. Like, where am I going? What, what are my goals, right? What are my goals? Do I just want to do SMP? Do I want to teach? Do I want to own my own company? Like, what, what are the things that, that I'm looking to do, right? And, and he just really inspired me a lot. And, and he, you know, obviously we went, we did technical work too. He did a beard while I was down there, which was great to see uh, him do. He's, he's an incredible artist. And even just to, when I started working and jumping in and for him to tell me like, hey, you got everything down. Uh, you are going to be good. Just keep, keep at it and don't doubt yourself. Like, you got this, right? And I remember, uh, like right, right around the last day, I was about to bounce, and he's just, I go, I'm gonna call you from time to time and bug you. And he's like, from time to time, he's like, you better call me all the time, bro. Call me all the time. He's like, we're good. family now, you know. Um, and I appreciated that from him so much. And the same thing, that's exactly how Marvin is. That's exactly how John and Brittany are. Like, you can reach out, and they want this industry to succeed as a whole. Right, because for every botch job there is, that's that's advertising to why not to get SMP, right? So we want to promote good quality work across the country, right? I'm not scared of somebody opening across the street from me, right? Because maybe they have a style that that they appreciate. But I'm gonna the hair loss industry. I mean, everybody's losing hair, so I am not scared of competition. I can only compete with myself. Yeah, and you shouldn't be. I mean, there's over 75 million people experiencing hair loss. Even if you could, if they all came to you, there's absolutely no way you'd be able to, to cater to all of them anyway. Um, I want you to, if you could, can you give like, um, you know, what, what, what would you suggest for an artist if they're trying to reach out to, to another artist to try to tap in and get some information? Can you give a little like insight, like what's some advice like on how to approach? Like what would you what would you do aside from the cigars? You know, like what what's your approach? You know, if I like someone's general uh, genuine energy or some not not only liking their work, right, but just like their energy and how they are with customer or something that I really like how they do right on a personal level. I, you know, maybe they put out funny videos that you really appreciate, you think are funny, right? Like, uh, I mean, we all like compliments if they're genuine, right? Like, you don't, you, if you really think something's good, you should put it out there. Like, hey, I really like this. It's really good. And this is why, right? And I'm, you know, and I would use myself an example and be like, this is something I don't know how to do yet, right? And I want to get at that level. As you know, is there any advice you could tell me to start doing so I could start like getting to that level or be able to use this technique and, and so forth? And it goes a long way, right? Because not only do the people like genuine compliments, but they just like to feel good energy from people, right? And if somebody doesn't respond to you, they're busy, you know what I mean? Or maybe they're not, not trying to do it and there's no, there's no time to get your feelings hurt about it, you know what I mean? It really isn't, you know, it's just like, you go, I talk, I know I've talked to um, so many different, artists. Chris Herrera, you know, as busy as he is, um, what I really loved about his energy, right? Every day, four or five in the morning, he's screaming into the camera, what's up SMP world, right? And people expect that. If he don't wake up one day and say that, people are like, man, is Chris all right? Right? So like he, he has established that, that uh, energy, right? And 
So everybody has to have their thing. And I like that. And I thought, okay, well, what, what's going to be my thing, right? Um, uh, besides quality work, right? Like you, you want to put, put out quality work, but you also want to connect on a personal level to other artists and to your clients, right? And something that you say all the time is put out content for your clients to look at or future clients to look at, not for all other artists to compliment you on. Because other artists are going to compliment you regardless if you're putting out a good work. But you don't have to cater to them. Right. You know, you have to cater to your audience because at the end of the day, other artists are paying their own bills, not yours. Exactly. Yeah. You know, not yours. Ever. I mean, unless you have a product. So how do you keep yourself? Uh, how do you market yourself, man? Like, you know, especially when you were starting out, what were what were the mistakes you were making in the beginning? And what are you doing now? You know, at first I was just... Uh, I was just putting stuff on Instagram and pictures of, of work, heads, what is SMP type of stuff. But, but you need something that is going to capture someone's attention, whether it's humor, whether it's the technical aspect of what exactly we're doing. And in this day and age of where you can look up how to fix anything or troubleshoot anything on YouTube, right? It's really important to explain the process from start to finish and really be knowledgeable about what you're doing. So when I know for when clients come in and have a consult with me, um, they, they leave with so much information floating in their head because I'm passionate about what I'm gonna do. And I'll talk, talk to them about the epidermis and the dermis and how deep the, the needle goes, the size of the needle, the type of pigments that are out there. And I'll even tell them, you don't have to book today, go do your research. Go do your research and find out if there's another artist that you want to go to. And most of the time, they still come back. They come back to us here at SMP Inc., especially here in, in, in the Bay. Like, I, I love it. I mean, I feel confident enough to send people away without booking a deposit, knowing that they're going to come back. That happened today. A guy I spoke to yesterday. I told him to go out, look at other places. And he came back right away. And he was like, you know what? Other people were using it as like a side thing. I want the hair... Uh, uh, a hair restoration place and they said they only would do the scars and this is not their primary focus and I told them I was like man I'm gonna take care of you you know I'm gonna I'm not gonna charge you per session I'm gonna charge you a set price and as many sessions as it takes for you to get the look that you want and you deserve is what we're gonna do dope yeah man and that also lets the uh potential consumer or client know like how confident um you know, you are when you send them out, like, hey, you know, listen, I encourage you go see what else is out there. And, you know, some of them, more, I, I, I use that. That's a technique I use too. some of them. They just go like, they don't even leave. It's just like, all right, no, I got you. All right, let's make it happen. So Roger, what would the artists, the SMP artists that you are today tell the SMP artists sitting down on his first fundamentals training? What knowledge would you give? I would say that you have to be, well, you do have to become very knowledgeable in your craft, but you have to become very knowledgeable in how to market yourself the correct way. Find, be genuine to yourself. Don't be, uh, don't fabricate a, a persona because people will see through that. You know, you, you can have, uh, you, you, whatever you do has to come from a genuine personality trait that you have, right? And people are going to see that and they're going to be drawn to that energy whether they're drawn to your energy or mine, we, we, we might have the same client or a different type of client that saw something that they, they want to resonate with. Um, you know, like I have lots of tattoos and I would think the same thing. If I didn't vibe with my tattoo artist, I wasn't gonna let him um, put a portrait or anything on me. You know what I mean? Like I had to have like a genuine, genuine energy connection with them. But then you would think like, what drew me to them? What, what was it that brought me in to come into the office in the first place, right? And so you really have to put out um, genuine content, right? Of you being yourself, being out there, talking to people, telling them what it is, why you're excited to do it, why this is what you do and why you love it. It's not just, I mean, yes, we, we, we are getting paid and that's important, but it's what's really important about it is loving what you do. Because when you love what you do, you're going to be a perfectionist in this craft. Dope, dope, man. And now, 
you've been in the industry, you know, you're going on two years, you've obviously learned and you understand that there are, it's a roller coaster ride being an entrepreneur. Um, do you see yourself on this ride for the next five years? Next 10, 15, you know, um, honestly, I, I feel like it's not just about doing SMP. Um, I'm starting to very, very uh, start to touch on the education aspect of it. I took um, a look at our training at SMP Inc. and what I liked and what I thought needed improvement as well as the other classes I've taken and just think about like what tools would I really want to learn as a brand new SMP artist that would have helped me get started, right? So, uh, so we really developed and worked very hard to create a comprehensive training system here at SMP Inc. where we have a mentorship program as well, um, letting people come back into our studio and do their first sessions and their, their, their complete first client under our supervision. So they feel like somebody has their back and is gonna be there to like, basically have catch them in a net if they feel like something's going wrong, when there's something going wrong with the needle, because you don't really know what to do when stuff goes wrong, right? right? If the needle's not functioning right, or if the ink is spraying all over the place, or, or from cleaning the needle, like you can't remember everything from class at one time. And when you do it a lot, it becomes muscle memory. You are, I already know how to troubleshoot a needle like that, because I've dealt with it now. But did I know how to do that a couple of years ago? I absolutely could not. You right? just get out and, and threw it away, right? Yeah, yeah, you, uh, exactly. I threw it like this. Don't work, boom, you know. And and some people still do that, but it's good to know your equipment, and it's good to know how to navigate through the lows as well as the highs. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, Roger, before we wrap it up, brother, can you let everyone know where they can find you? Website, Instagram, all that good stuff. Oh uh, yeah, www.smpinc.com. Um, I'm SMPX Ponce, P-O-N-C-E on Instagram. Um, um, we're located in the Bay Area uh, of Northern California, God's country out here. Um, <laughs> beautiful weather, beautiful weather. Come see the Golden Gate Bridge. We're located in Danville, which is about 25 minutes away from San Francisco because uh, San Francisco is a little crazy <laughs> and it's crazy expensive out there. Um, <laughs> But, oh, but no, we're here. We have a we have a beautiful, beautiful location. We're actually opening a new location that's good. That is the SMP Inc. Academy that will focus all on educational aspects of SMP. Um, and we really want to create something special to have the most comprehensive training for SMP in the country. Outstanding. Awesome. Roger, my brother, I appreciate you again for coming on the podcast, you know, and being 100% transparent with your come up in the industry, the hurdles you had to overcome, sharing your mindset, and, you know, you know, pretty much setting, you know, some some expectations for these artists that what they, they, they need to get ready, you know, to, to, to encounter. And it's not just going to be, oh, I've learned the technique and I'm ready to make six figures or I'm going to make mm -hmm. 300, 400,000, but you don't have a foundation. You know, you need all these tools lined up in order to create that ultimate uh, successful artist. Um, again, my brother, I, I appreciate you. I wish you much success in the future. And I know you will because you got the right mindset and you are surrounded by the right people, man. The guys and girls at S&P Inc., man, good, good people, dope artists. Um, I think you're going to be all right, bro. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me on the show. Just uh, letting people out there fight through the lows. If you want to hit me up and ask me questions or when you're feeling like I don't want to do this, hit me up. We'll talk about why and why you should keep going, right? Um, because this is something that's going to be very special and grandiose in the next few years. And I got a little tip for the, if you're a newbie and you want to hit up Roger, you want to get a little bit of insight on the game, listen, send, send him a nice cigar. Send him a nice cigar. Yeah, you got, you got him. What, what that, what that gonna buy you, Roger? About 15, 20 minutes. There you go. Oh. That, that'll be that'll be twenty questions, right? Is that what you said? Twenty <laughs> questions. Twenty questions. You got a twenty question minimum. I appreciate you. All right, cool, Roger. Again, I appreciate you, brother. That's gonna wrap it up for this episode of the Scalp Solutions Podcast. Until the next time, guys. Peace. Peace. Thank you, Dave.